One day before Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, Polish President Andrzej Duda visited Kyiv and promised that Poland would never leave Ukraine alone. After the war began, Poland welcomed Ukrainians fleeing the war and treated them as guests. Lukasz Adamski, deputy director of Moroszewski Center in Warsaw, pointed out that Poland become a home for millions of Ukrainian refugees. Ukrainian citizens have extended rights in Poland and vice versa. Poland also has played a crucial role in facilitating the delivery of Western weapons, systems and humanitarian supplies to Ukraine. Adamski said that the Russian threats changed the not always smooth relationship between Ukraine and Poland. Uh, war contributed uh, significantly to the intensification of bilateral contact, to the uh, enormous improvement of, of trust uh, and liking to each other. And uh, it also revealed that uh, both states have common uh, interests, common vision of future. In May, Polish President Duda spoke to the Ukrainian parliament in person, the first foreign leader to do so since the war began. He stressed his support for Ukraine's request to join the European Union and criticized those in Europe who suggested that Ukraine accept some of Russian President Vladimir Putin's demands. In his view, any territorial concession to Russia would be the blow to the entire Western world. Only Ukraine has a right to decide its future. Only Ukraine has a right to decide for itself. The world must demand from Russia the total withdrawal from Ukraine's territory and stop breaking international law. In 2022, Poland became one of Ukraine's main military supporters and along with fellow Baltic states, a lobbyist for Kyiv's integration into EU and NATO. Warsaw's strong support for Ukraine contributed to an improvement in what had been a period of fairly bumpy relations with Washington. U.S. President Joseph Biden visited Poland in March, meeting Ukrainian refugees and American troops on the ground. During his trip, he asserted the United States' strategic goal of supporting Ukraine's fight for democracy and self-determination and identified Poland as an important battlefield in the struggle for freedom and security in Europe. In a speech at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, he emphasized the historical importance of Poland's capital city in the fight against oppression. The nation had played a key role in the events that led to the breakup of the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe and the end of the Cold War. For generations, Warsaw has stood where liberty has been challenged and liberty has prevailed. Today's fight in Kyiv and Metropole and Kharkiv are the latest battle in a long struggle. Hungary, 1956. Poland, 1956. And then again, 1981. Czechoslovakia, 1968. He outlined the U.S. commitment to Ukraine and pointed out that the Russian actions in Ukraine strengthened bonds among allies. Instead, Russian forces have met their match with brave and stiff Ukrainian resistance. Rather than breaking Ukrainian resolve, Russia's brutal tactics have strengthened the resolve. Rather than driving NATO apart, the West is now stronger and more united than it has ever been. Russia wanted less of a NATO presence on its border, but now he has a stronger presence, a larger presence with over 100,000 American troops here, along with all the other members of NATO. The United States and Poland have both contributed financially to Ukraine. According to the Kale Institute for the World Economy, between January 24 and October 3, the U.S. pledged nearly $55 billion in military, humanitarian and financial aid to Ukraine, while Poland pledged nearly $3 billion. With Polish territory being a base for Ukrainian support, Poland has become an indispensable U.S. ally for European security. Miroslava Gongadze, VOA. News, Warsaw, Poland.